to be glorified. You are worthy, oh Lord, you are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, oh Lord, you are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, you are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, oh Lord, you are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, you are worthy, Lord, you are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, oh Lord, you are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, oh, Lord. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, oh, Lord. You are worthy to be Glorified, you are worthy, you are worthy, Savior. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, you are worthy, Savior. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, oh. To be glorified, you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, oh. To be glorified, you are worthy, you are worthy, Savior. You are worthy to be glorified, you are worthy, oh Lord. You are worthy to be glorified, you are worthy, you are worthy, Master. You are worthy to be glorified, you are worthy, oh to be glorified. You are worthy, you are worthy, Savior. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Stahili ewe Yesu una stahili kuwa budiwa una stahili we bana Yesu una stahili kuwa budiwa una stahili ewe Yesu una stahili kuwa budiwa una stahili wa wa falme una stahili kuwa Unastahili ewe Yesu Unastahili kuabudiwa Unastahili hakuna kama wewe Unastahili kuabudiwa Unastahili ewe Yesu Unastahili kuabudiwa Unastahili ewe darimwema Unastahili kuabudiwa Unastahili ewe Yesu Unastahili kuabudiwa Unastahili Bwana wa mabwana Unastahili kuabudiwa Unastahili ewe Yesu Unastahili kuabudiwa Unastahili ewe 
give you praise and glory, Lord. We magnify your name, glorify your name, Jesus. We exalt your name, we magnify your name. You are holy, you are precious, you are mighty. Glory to Jesus, glory to the Son of the living God. Glory to the Savior of the world, Jesus the Lord. We magnify your name, we glorify your name, Jesus. Lift up your name, your hands and just love him. Lift up your hands and just bless the Lord. Makabosi kanama handori babosi kanama. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Lamb of God. We bless you, Lamb of God. We lift you, Lamb of God. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy. You are worthy to be lifted. You are worthy, Lord. Makabo si kanaba hando ribabo. Yante bo si kanaba hande ribabo si kanaba. Jesus, we worship you. Lamb of God, we bless you. Lamb of God, we lift up your name. Lamb of God, we magnify you, Jehovah. You are worthy to be praised, Jehovah God. You are worthy to be magnified, Jesus. You are worthy to be exalted, our Father. Hakuna kama wewe bwana. Hakuna wakulinganisha na wewe Mungu wetu. Hakuna kufana nisha na wewe bwana ama bwana. Makabosi kana mahande ribabo. Rika masekeri babosi kana mahando ribabo. Makebosi kana mahando ribabo. Tunakuabudu, tunakupenda. Tunakutukuza bwana ama bwana. Tunalimidi jina lako takatifu. Tunalimidi jina lako lenye nguvu. Tunalimidi jina lako lenye mamlaka. Tunalimidi jina Hakuna lako juu ya majina yote bwana hakuna kama wewe bwana hakuna kama wewe Mungu wetu hakuna kama wewe Simba wa Yuda hakuna kama wewe bwana jina lako litukuzwe mfalme mwema jina lako libarikiwe Jehova asante kwa wema wako bwana asante kwa neema yako Mungu wetu asante kwa fadhili zako Jehova unatenda mema bwana makebosi kana mahandori babo Lord, we give you praise. My Lord, we give you praise and glory. Lord, we give you praise and glory. We give you praise and glory, Jesus. We magnify your name, O oh God. Glorify your name, Jesus. Glorify your name. Glorify your name, Jehovah. Glorify your name, Jesus. Glorify your name, Savior. Lord, we give you praise. Oh Lord, we give you praise and glory. We worship you, Jesus. We magnify your name, O oh God. Many tender mema, many tender mema, many tender mema, yes. Many tender mema, many tender mema. Many tender, mema, Jesus. Many tender, mema, many tender, mema, many tender, mema, many tender, mema, Jesus. Me 
we surrender to you this evening our hour of fellowship with the Holy Ghost. This is our time of refreshing in the presence of the Most High God. You are filling this house with power from heaven. Lord every tiredness will be swallowed up with your strength Lord. Every fear will be overtaken by faith and boldness and courage. We surrender this day to you and pray Father the God who created the universe, our Father and our God, you will lift us another level. For when the Spirit, oh my God, when the enemy comes like a flood, your Spirit is here alone to raise a standard for us. May we be strengthened in the spirit of the inner man. May we be equipped tonight to conquer every challenge. May we be equipped tonight, Lord, to rise up above the ordinary line. May we be equipped tonight, Father, to fight a good fight of faith in this world, O oh God. We surrender to you this evening and pray. No weapon schemed against this house tonight shall prosper. No demon fashion against this meeting will prevail. We declare this is God's meeting. This is a meeting between the father and sons and daughters of law. The devil has no place. The devil has no portion. We pray for those that are coming on the way, Father. Nothing will hinder anybody from coming to be before the law. I pray that you hasten the steps of your people. We're going to have good times in your presence this Friday. We give you praise and we give you glory. Satan is under our feet. And we are strong in God and in the power of his son, Jesus. We thank you and we bless you. Receive all the glory, Father, and receive all the honor in Jesus mighty and precious name we pray amen, amen. wonder to celebrate the king of kings and the lord of lords the great i am the alpha and the omega let's give him a praise hallelujah amen. shout to the lord and give him praise we are strong in the lord and in the power of his might amen bible says be strong in the lord and in the power of his might I believe that this evening you are not a weakling. You are strong. You have the spirit of God within you. Hallelujah. The same spirit that came upon David and he said, give me a chance 
to fight this Philistine. And I'm telling you, we have some Goliath in 2021, but we are receiving the spirit of God within us. We will stand before God and say, Father, I am privileged to know you because by knowing you, this giant is too small. When you get to know the Lord, your God, you will be strong. Somebody say amen. amen. The knowledge of the Lord, your God, makes you strong. And you are able to face every Goliath of your life. Deficiency of the word of God makes you very weak. You look at yourself as a person. But I'm here to say to Naona Mungu. Hatuoni jitu. Na mimi natangazia kila jitu la 2021. Tutapeana kichwa chago komfalme. Hallelujah. I say we are telling every Goliath will cut off your head. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, prepare to cut the head of Goliath. Come on. Prepare to slaughter Goliath. Because the power of God is coming into the inside of us. Somebody say amen. amen. There are some sorcerers who will have to circumcise this year. Did you hear what I said? We have some sorcerers whose skin we will cut. Amen. David was told if you will marry my son, the soul, soul the king said to David, if you will marry my daughter, I want 30 skins, I don't know how many skins of the Philistines. He's like he was inciting David so that he goes to die. In the camp of the Philistines. But David was full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And he said, what a chance. I will marry the son, the daughter of the king. And he took some men and the fighting equipment. Within no time, he brought the 30 skins of the, you know, the Philistines. He had already circumcised them. Now I'm here to tell you somebody will circumcise the enemy. Amen. I'm here to tell you bring down the enemy because of Jehovah. Somebody say amen. amen. The devil must lose. I say the devil must lose. Amen. The devil must be our carpet. Amen. The devil must be our doormats. Amen. The door, you know, we have to stand strong in him and in the power of his might. Amen. We have to be strong in God and in the power. And this evening you are receiving a new anointing. Amen. Declare before we share from the word of God. This evening I heard from the spirit God will breathe on us. Amen. Before Jesus ascended to heaven. After resurrection, he called the, 12, the 11 disciples together. And after speaking to them, he breathed on them. And I came this evening telling Jesus, I want a fresh breath from heaven. That breath that will ignite my spirit. That breath will, that will ignite the wisdom of God in me. The power of God. And I'm here to say, heavens are going to open up and the breath of God will pass through this place taking away fear, taking away pain, taking away stress. Somebody look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor your stress is about to go in a few minutes. Every stress inherited from 2020, that stress will disappear. Somebody say amen. Amen. The breath of God will eliminate every stress. Amen. We are about to experience calm and peace and tranquility amen. from the throne of grace. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor, why are you taking too much time and we are standing you know, fire time or revival time is excitement time. Amen. If you are not excited about this life, if you are not excited about the God of our salvation, the devil will take the day. Amen. One thing I loved about this faith, be strong in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I love when I see Cristiano Ronaldo and going to the pitch. He does, he does not walk like the rest of the people. He will make some three steps in the pitch and, and then you see him doing like this. He scares the enemies. He tells them Cristiano Ronaldo is here. And I want to tell you the truth. That young man, give him a ball. You will not know he's 35 years old. He's able to score. And I'm praying that you will show the devil. Greater is he that is in you than the devil in the world. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor before they discover I will have three goals. Before they discover in this match, I will have three goals. Somebody say amen. Amen. 2021 before they discover we will be ahead with three goals. Amen. That is why we get into revival in January. Mm. Somebody say amen. amen. God will show you the weakness of your opponents. Mm. Come on, when you're going to Hit the ball for a penalty. God will tell you the goalkeeper will go this side. And then you just score. Come on. I see you scoring in 2021. Amen. I see you scoring in 2021. Amen. 
Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor you can do better than Lukaku. Come on. You can do better than Lukaku of Inter Milan. Come on. We're going to score. <laughs> We're going to score in the name of Jesus. Wonderful choir. Let's appreciate God for the wonderful choir. We are so blessed and this, this church is blessed. I can tell you we are the best in Jombu. Come on, we are the best. There is no competition there. We are the best because God has given us grace. I say God has given us grace. And we are a winning team. Before we sit down, tell two, three people and tell them you are part of a winning team. You are part of the winning team and there is no bargain over there. You are, Jesus is in our team. And as long as he's in our team, you are part of the winning team. Come on. We are, we are a winning team together with Jesus. We are a winning team. And Satan is going to lose in this battle. And Satan is going to lose. In, your children will pass exams. Your animals will succeed. Prosper. You have to move because you are part of the winning team. Come on. The Holy Ghost is in the camp. Jesus is in the camp. Angels are in the camp. The blood of Jesus is in the camp. We are a winning team. Praise be to the Lord. Please, you may find a place to sit shortly. We just want to crown our three days of faith, fire, fellowship. Three days of faith, fire, fellowship. And we're going to be blessed in the name of Jesus. Second Timothy, chapter number. I want to welcome those who are joining us through our Facebook page. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice in it and be glad. Second Timothy, chapter number one. I'll be reading from verse, probably verse number six. Let's see where to read from. We are telling our faith, my faith, you will be stirred up. My faith, you'll have to rise and be strong. There is something in us, but we have to stir up the gift of God in our hearts. Bible says, verse 3, I thank God whom I serve as did my ancestors with a clear conscience as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelled first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And now, I am sure dwells in you as well. For this reason, underline verse 6, for this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power, of love, and of self-control. What we want to underline is, for this reason I remind you to fan into flame. Praise be to the Lord. To fan into flame. Turn to the neighbor that is closer to you and tell them we are fanning our faith to flame. We are fanning the gift of God to flame. Praise be to the Lord. The people that have once lit a jiko, we get to know there could be some fire, but some fire will not catch up with charcoal until there is a blowing. So as you continue to fan like this, you begin to see sparks coming. There is a word in us. They are the things God has deposited in us, but we are commanded by the Apostle Paul we have to do something to fan that which is already in us to flame. Praise be to the Lord. So there is a work the apostle is giving this young believer who is being raised into a leader to the church. Timothy was a student. He was a son in the spiritual realms to the apostle Paul. At a time when people were deserting from faith and some of the very closest friends of the Apostle Paul who are moving away from him. They were ashamed of the chains on the hands of the Apostle Paul. And they were calming down in their faith saying, if this is what faith can do, that a man who has been doing miracles can be arraigned in court and can be chained, 
and is not moving. And the faith of many people calmed down. They behave like they were not born again before. There are so many things that are happening today. Within no time you will discover that people that were praying are not praying anymore. That people that were fellowshipping are not fellowshipping anymore because the gift of God in them is dormant. That is the work of the enemy. John 10.10 10 says, The enemy comes but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And every child of God should be vigilant. Every child of God should be alert because the enemy, like a roaring lion, he is skimming every time to make sure you used to pray, but you are not praying anymore. You used to read the word of God and you are every time underlining some things in the Bible. You used to have some mark pain. And every time something you know, struck your mind, you are careful to stick there and underline and remember some other scripture in another chapter and connect the same and write in a notebook. But the devil is never happy to see somebody strong because they know if you will be strong, you will bind some demons. If you will be strong, you will destroy their territory. They will bring some progress in your life. They will allow you to buy a 56-inch screen so that you are no longer strong in the faith, so that your eyes are glued on television, so that the gift of God in you, there is a gift in you, but the gift is dormant. There is a gift in you, but the gift is not producing fruit. But I've come to say like the Apostle Paul, I'm ready to find the gift of God on flame to me, in the inside of me. It is time for you to be the Timothy of today and tell the devil no matter what comes my way, I will find the gift of God to flame. I want to be fiery. I want to be alert. I want to be strong in the Lord. The Apostle Paul says Timothy, I saw some faith in you. I saw some potential in you. And you are not the beginner of this thing. It was in your grandmother, Lois. I saw the same in your mother, Eunice. And I know that it is you. That is why I come to the church in Jomfu. I know you carry some measure of grace. I know you carry some measure of faith. It is time to make your faith arise. It is time to start raising the dead. Somebody say hallelujah. You carry the gift of God in you. You carry the grace of God in you. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, there is a, no, a treasure but in earthen vessel. Even though you are an earthen vessel, but there is a treasure of God in you. There is an anointing is in you. I say to somebody, you can be a pastor. Don't overlook yourself. Somebody say amen. If I was to send you where you were born, I can begin a church there and I will call you Pastor Catherine. Now I'll be telling my sister, how is the church doing? How was the Sunday service? And she'll be telling me three people got saved. She'll be telling me somebody came with the fever. I laid hands on them and they were healed. We have to find the gift of God to flame. We have to tell the devil early in the morning, I will wake up and I will pray. Early in the morning, I will not begin the day taking tea. Taking tea should not be priority. You begin the day with prayer. You begin the day with looking at a scripture. And you tell God today, I'm going to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So Timothy, there is a faith in you. Now I've come to tell somebody today there is faith in you there is ability in you there is potential in you jesus is hidden in the inside of you you need to wake up jesus before you sing he was in the boat with them but they were almost sinking because of a storm they were almost losing everything but jesus was just right there <laughs> he was right within them but they were almost sinking until they discovered we have somebody within this boat who cannot allow the sinking to continue. They had to go and wake them. That is, they had to wake Jesus up. And I'm here to tell you, Jesus is in your heart. Jesus is in your heart. You cannot allow a sinking and there is a savior in your heart. You have to wake him up. Somebody say amen. You could only be knowing one scripture. It is enough to make you rich. You don't need to know the whole Bible in King James Version. You don't need to know the Bible in message form. You have to remember that one scripture that you know and tell that scripture together with you, I will be healed of this disease. The scripture in you should heal every disease. The scripture in you should cause things to work in your life. Timothy, you have a measure of faith. 
you have a gift and some more power was deposited in you after we laid hands on you. And many of us, hands have been laid on you many years. Many times, almost every year, you have hands laid on you. There is something in you. You have to fan to flame the gift of God in your life. Why? Verse number 7. The Bible says in verse number 7, For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power. I want to begin with power. It takes the power of God. We call it the anointing. The gift of God comes with an anointing accompany. Every time God chooses on a man, he deposits a measure of his power on them. Every time God picks on anybody, he deposits a measure of his portion, a God portion in you, a power, it is ability, it is potential, dynamism. But if you are silent and you don't discover you are anointed, Somebody will bewitch you wherever, whereas you are supposed to stop them. We have not received the spirit of fear to be afraid of anything. We have received the spirit of power. There is an anointing accompanying every faith-believing church. Faith carries power. And you need to know it is not you to run away. Which doctor should run away? It is not you to pack up and go. Whoever wants you to pack up and go must pack up and go. And power talks about the authority in the name of Jesus. We are born again in no other name but the name of Jesus. It is the name by which we are born again. We have been given privilege to use the name of Jesus. Whatever we bind in his name is bound. That is what we call power. Every sickness is in trouble. I'm here to declare from this minute you bind every sickness. Because you have received power. From today you will bind whatever was binding you. Because greater is he that is in you than the sickness in the world. We have received power to conquer our environment. The environment should not conquer me. The environment should not conquer you. Conquer your environment. Let people know you exist. And it's time people will know you exist. On that very plot, pray until eh, they want you to vacate. Pray until... Their systems go per sack. You have to pray until those who carry some paraphernalia from where they were born, they are living with them on the same plot to affect the performance of children in their class. You pray until their systems stop. It is time believers have to change every environment where we stay. You have to walk around. You have, there was a time God quickened me and I was tired of some things where I was born. Very tired. We have a portion of land and it's like things are not working. The had the spirit of God tell me, son, you have to do something. You have to effect that which you carry. The had the spirit of God telling me, go walk around your entire farm. My father's land. It's not easy to go all around the boundary. But the spirit told me, you carry an anointing. You carry some power. Begin from the far end. There is a bush here. There is a bush there. But you have to walk as you possess. You have to walk as you display some demons. You have to walk as you declare some words. There is power to declare and the power affects something. And I walked around. I was tired of being at home. There was no school fees and there is a land that can produce. And I was walking declaring. I was walking. And today as I am speaking today, I don't know if there is any portion of land where I was born. That is not in use. And people are reaping money where there was a bush. You carry power to display some things. You carry power to pull down. You carry power to destroy. You carry power to uproot. There are things we have to uproot before the year goes. We have to uproot some demons. We have to declare some. You carry power. You have not received the spirit of fear. How do we know somebody is afraid? They cry. We are not supposed to cry. Soldiers don't cry. You are a child of God. You carry power. Fear is of the devil. Fear is of the enemy. They want to plant fear in you, but you have to declare the power of God. Timothy, you carry power. Timothy, you carry an anointing. I'm here to tell the Timothy of today, you are as anointed as any other person. But you have to flame it. You have to find the anointing to flame. The only way to find the anointing to flame, you have to pray with your hands lifted in the morning. And you tell God from this place of prayer, I will 
will declare things. From this place of prayer, I will declare, I will pronounce, I will announce things and things have to work. We are here in this place to make a difference. Until we assume our office of operation, you will never be known to exist until you use your power. You have to use the power given unto you. Bible says in John chapter number 1 verse number 12. He came to his very own, referring to the Hebrews. But his very own never received him. But to those who received him and to those who believed in him, he gave them power to be called children of God. And I'm here to tell somebody, you have been given power because of the blood of Jesus. Having been washed by the blood of Jesus, you have been enlisted in heaven. You are a child in the kingdom of God. Bible says in Romans chapter number 8 verse number 15, we have received the spirit of adoption who speaks to a spirit and tells your spirit, you are a child of God. And as a child of God, you have power, the power of God. God is not selfish of the power. Every power God has, he gives his children. Now I'm here to tell you the same power by which Jesus turned water into wine. The same power by which Jesus opened the blind eyes. The same power by which Jesus resurrected Lazarus. He has given us power in his name. He says to his disciples in John 14, verse 13, 14, I have been with you for all this time. You have never asked anything. Ask whatever you need in my name. And you will be given that my father may be glorified. We have power to call heaven and heavens open up. We have power to bless our children going to school. And our children will perform well. I'm here to tell somebody you carry power. You carry an anointing. You carry potential. I'm here to say you can do something about your situation. Nobody may know, but you can do something about your situation. Before you go to people, you carry some power to resuscitate your home. I say you carry power to put alive your home. Nobody should begin laughing at you because there is somebody anointed in that home. You carry an anointing. You are anointed in that home. You are not helpless. You are a, not a passive nominal member of the home. You are an active member of the home. You can make a spiritual decision. Somebody say hallelujah. Born in a family that things are not working. And as I was growing up, I had one thing from their lips. Prophet. They used to call me prophet up to today. Some of the remaining grand, grand you know, elderly women that raised me up together with my mother. They knew this young man born in this home is a messenger of God. Because before I was born, some two or one month before I was born, a prophet was there and he told my mother, you are carrying a baby boy. Then he died. But after my mother gives birth and they see a baby boy and there was no scan. Kakamega Hospital, I don't know whether it has a scanning equipment at that time. If they had, I don't know. But after my mother discovered this young man is a baby boy without scan, he said, I will not name him after any other person. He picked the name of the man of God. He put it on me. And then from that minute on, everybody, they called me preacher man. And I discovered this, is, this thing is good. And I loved it. And I started to grow in a home surrounded by everything that can kill the gift. You know you can be called a good name, but everything around you wants to kill the gift. Everything around me, poverty, discouragement. I don't want to talk about those things. My brothers are listening. I want to tell you something. I started to say another young man has been born in this home. Who will change the situation? I gave my life to Jesus. After giving my life, you know you can be called prophet, but you are a sinner. Born of a woman, you are a sinner. <laughs> So you have to repent. That is why Jesus had to take himself to John the Baptist. And he's like, you are the son of God. How dare I baptize you? Jesus said that I may fulfill all righteousness. That I may show it as an example to everybody. So in 1993, Form 1, after listening to a pure gospel, far from religion, because I'd been raised in religion, I'd been a, you know, a Sunday school teacher and I was doing so well in religion. But after a pure preaching of the word of God, I said in my spirit, I'm sinner number one. So called prophet, I steal sugar. <laughs> I need to give my life to Jesus. And I believed in him. On 23rd of May, 1993, daytime, 
I raised my hand. I gave my life to Jesus. And I allowed him to be Lord and Savior of my life. What happened that day? A gift was rekindled in me. And I was telling the church at lunchtime today. And I was telling them, a brother by the name Stanley Muliango. He would come to me and tell me, brother Steve, we're going to pray. And I would go because I knew, if anything, I'm raised from a praying family. Mama has been going to me with, with me to Keshas. I knew Keshas. Long before my eyes could see, I was in Kesha. So it is not hard, but I got into prayer. They started teaching me to pray and fast. Immediately, my eyes opened to see the reason for the troubles we have in our home. And in pain, I would wonder, how will we get out of this? And I started to find the gift of God in me to flame. By praying and fasting, in tears. Sometimes I remember, I would pray in tears. It is not a sin to cry before God. In your time of need. When you really see and know what we are facing is not physical, it's not natural, it is spiritual. I started to labor in the spirit. One day at four in the night, there is no electricity at home. It was total darkness. I'm praying from my cross touched house, a round house. Now I'm praying that the spirit tells me, you have to wake up and go out. Follow the instructions I will give you. Then I wake up praying, walking. And he tells me, don't use the panya roots you normally use. I, wanna, I want you to use the main road to the main gate. Stand there. I will tell you what to do next. Right at the gate in the night, as though I was a night runner. The spirit of God reminds me. And this is in the year, close to year 2000. He tells me, do you know what happened in 1986? Then I recollected. 1986, I was eight years old. But there are robbers who came and robbed our entire families. And after they robbed our entire families, they brought a sorcerer to come. They call it treating the homes. And I remember they were putting some funny, funny things in polythene. They put cement and they were putting in every gate. Our home, my uncle's place and all that. The spirit reminded me, do you remember that thing? And I discovered I can remember. And the Lord told me, that is an altar. As long as that thing is in this gate, your home is bound. Your home is resisted. Can you do something? I'm just talking about power. We've not been given the spirit of fear, but we've been given the spirit of power. And I told God, what you tell me is what I do. And the Lord told me it's you to speak. And I said from the depth of my heart, Lord, I closed this gate. And I had peace. I went to sleep. The same month, not even many weeks later, my own father, who was not there when God raised me in the, in, in, in the sleep, he comes and he tells me, son, I am not happy with where the gate is. We have to look for a place to put another gate. I was excited in the spirit. That day I declared I closed this gate. It was closed in heaven. Praise be to the Lord. It was closed. And we reopened another gate. We reopened. I want to tell you the truth. Before one year is over, Mumia Sugar, it was the biggest company in our area. They extended their nucleus up to our home area. You are not plowing the land yourself. They would come with the tractors. They would come with tractors with the ability to uproot heavy stamps. The, the stamps nobody can uproot. When you uproot something spiritually, God will send men to uproot physically. Within no time, there was no tree stamp in our home. The whole place was swept and everything done. My elder brother calls me, tells me, brother, let's go somewhere. We stand on an anthill and he asked me a question. Can you remember this is the same home we've been in with bushes and with failure and with the defeat? And I discovered I have not been given the spirit of fear, but of power to declare things. Now I'm here to tell somebody you are strong enough. You are equal to the demons in your home. You are more than anything that has been holding you. You carry power. Flame it. Cause it to be hot. Call prayer. Call prayer. Go home. Square with that devil. Square with that spirit. I'm believing God. You're going to build a story house there. Somebody say amen. So you have to know. God will not come to do it for us. He has anointed us to do. <laughs> God will not come to fight the devils of your home. He fought it all those years back. 
Bible says he threw the devil from heaven. God declared his home. We have to clear our homes. Somebody say amen. So you have to flame that gift that is in you. That panga, you carry a panga. And uh, I didn't want to go further, but let's go to this scripture and I close. Jeremiah 23 verse number 9. 29. You carry fire within you. The Bible says, is in the word of God like fire? Is in the word of God like fire? And this night, I see you releasing supernatural power from the inside of you to square out every enemy of your life. When we were about to do this project here, we started to pray and declare the word of God and things are opening up. And I'm telling people very soon there will be a bus out there, whether it will be a matatu or bus written on JCC Jom. We have to declare things. We have to believe in what we believe because we carry material enough to use to fight. We've not received the spirit of fear, but of power. That spirit is the word of God. Say amen. amen. Jeremiah 23, 29 says, Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. Bible says, Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer. The word of God is like fire. When you release the word, you release power. Stand boldly. Face your enemy. Release the word. Without wavering. We have not received the spirit of fear, but of power. The word of God on your lips is like fire. When you release the word of God, demons know. That is why they were scared of Job. They never could move closer to Job. He knew to pray. He knew to do what he needed to do. You have to stand. You have to be strong. You have to declare things. And I'm believing God. He is raising an army in this place. He is raising soldiers in this place. He is raising men and women who will not cower back. And you know, you begin to blame everybody and blame people. Powerful people don't blame anybody. They shoulder the, no, the challenge. You have to stand and declare, I'm winning in this battle. You have received power. The word of God on your lips is like a hammer. Now I'm praying from tonight. Use your hammer so well. Glory to God. Somebody say amen. The word of God is like a hammer breaking rocks. There are rocks we have to break. There are rocks we have to... Some of the places where we work, they are so strong. They are so protected by the devil that you can work in that place and never prosper. The word of God is like a hammer. Release the word of God in your environment of work. It will break into pieces every rocky opposition to our destiny. We have to release the word. We have not received weakness. We have received power. Now I'm here to tell the church we are strong. The churches we see having prospered in foreign lands and some even in our own country, they stood to use the gift of God in their life. Sometimes you just marvel when you see great men of God like Joseph Prince ministering to thousands of people seated in one place. You ask them, they will tell you they have fought a fight. You have to find the gift of God into flame. And you have to release the word of God on your lips. The Bible says, the word of God on our lips is a sword. Ephesians chapter number 6. I want to speak this as we build our faith. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor you have a sword closer to you. The word of God is the sword the sword of the spirit. Ephesians chapter number 6, verse number 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You have a sword. You cannot play with a man armed with a sword. They will pierce your stomach. The intestines will come out. And I'm declaring today, declare to the devil, he is a liar and a defeated fool. Pierce his stomach. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor you have a sword. Pierce the devil's stomach. Come on. Let his intestines come out. We have to stand strong like men anointed by God. Not to look like cowards. There is a blame in the book of Psalms. And I looked at it and I was so touched. Ephraim, even though armed with war equipment, they turned back on the day of war. And God hated Ephraim for that. Ephraim is one of the sons of, of, is one of, the sons of Joseph. And they were so blessed. They knew how to use the equipment. They knew how to fight. But on the day of battle, 
The Bible says, but Ephraim, you turned back your backs and you gave your enemy a back in a day of war. And that is what the church is almost doing. We are so equipped. We are armed with the sword of the spirit. When you mention the name Jesus on your lips, demons are harmed. They are destroyed. There is fire in the camp of the devil. But the children of God are complaining more than unbelievers. From today, I declare by the word of God, you are anointed to burn the wits of the Philistines. Somebody shout hallelujah. We carry an anointing on our lips. The word of God is a sword from the spirit. Release the word and just be silent. You will see results. Somebody say hallelujah. The word of God is powerful. Hebrews 4, 12, powerful. It is a sword. It is able to cut in a spiritual arena. You may not be physically seeing it, but the word I'm preaching in this place, wait in a short while. Thousands of people will flock here. There is power in the word of God. Somebody say amen. That is why I'm not ashamed of a crowd of 20 or 23. I know one day I'll be preaching to a thousand people. I know one day God will follow his word to perform it in this place. I know one day God will raise for me millionaires here. I continue preaching the word. There are people that appear to be small here. Wait and see the word of God move them up. Wait and see God raise their children. Wait and see God turn around their destinies. There is power in the word of of God. There is an anointing in the word of God. And I'm here to tell you God is looking at you. And God is going to change you into a dynamite. Somebody say hallelujah. I see you change your home. I see you raise your children. I see you turn your home into a palace. We have received not the spirit of fear. But of power of love and sound mind. Somebody say amen. So I'm preaching to the church saying. We are not just born again to go to heaven. We are born again to reign on earth. And we're going to reign in Jomfu. We're going to reign in Mombasa. We're going to reign in our environment. You are anointed. Thou Timothy, find the gift of God to flame. You have to wake up and some of you are preachers. I'm going to do one day a surprise here and I'll just raise one of you and call for a revival. And say and put a poster Stick it everywhere and say, meet. <laughs> Mama Irene Juma is our speaker the three days. And I want to tell you the truth, you will be blessed. I can challenge you, you will be blessed. Some of us don't know we carry an anointing. But we are yet to see the anointing of God work in your life. Somebody say amen. amen. We have to believe in what God has given us. The word of God within us is like fire. The word of God is like a hammer. Let's use the word of God to change our environment. We must make up our mind. Can I close the words of the Apostle Paul in the same part where I read? God has helped us to have a faith and we have committed our faith to him. Don't allow yourself to be drawn back. That is my parting statement. Don't allow yourself to be drawn back. You began this journey with God. Fight a good fight of faith. Keep the faith. Somebody say hallelujah. Keep the faith. The apostle Paul says something so powerful in verse number 12. I will skip the rest and read verse number 12. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Amen. 2 Timothy 1, 12. Um, short of time. But I'm um, to finish with this. Verse 10 says, And which now has been manifested through the appearance of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. This gospel we have abolished death. Death has no power. We have an anointing within us through which God abolished death through Christ. For which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. Paul is very confident. He says because of this gospel I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. A teacher and a teacher which is why I suffer as I do. And the next verse is my verse. But I am not ashamed. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, don't be ashamed of the grace that is in you. Don't be ashamed of the grace that is in you. That anointing you carry is very valuable. The devil will want you to look like you are not anointed. But don't be ashamed of the gift of God in your life. You cannot buy it with money. It is so precious. You cannot sell land to buy salvation. 
and the gift of God we carry. He says, I am not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed. And I am convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. God is willing to guard that treasure that he has entrusted in you. If you only keep yourself praying, you read Hebrews chapter number 11, 10 verse 25. Some people forsake fellowship. They stay away from fellowship and they lose the fire within them. We should not be like them. The Bible says in verse 25 of, Ephesians, of Hebrews 10, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For we, for he who promised is faithful. Hold fast the profession of our faith. That is in verse number 23. Verse 25 says, not neglecting to meet together as the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing in your stand on your feet in the presence of the Lord. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor you are very important to me because you are my encouragement. Somebody say amen. Encouraging one another. We should not move away from the confession of faith. That is why when you see your brother, they ignite your spirit. When you, and thank God for those who are born again, two or three in the same home. You have to strengthen one another in the faith. Did you discover when you are doing some cooking using kuni? You cannot cook anything with one kuni. They have to be two connected together or three. Thank God for some of us that are two of us in the same house. Join your hands and pray over something. Somebody say amen. Join your hands. If there is a little boy, little girl there, have six hands together. They may not be praying, but they will stir up the power of God in that fellowship. We have to continue to find the gift of God to flame. That is why I've called for this meeting, so that our faith will be strengthened. And I'm here to tell you, this January that they call a January of hunger, there will be abundance. Faith does not know January. Faith knows the word of God. I'm declaring by the word of God you will harvest in January. God will command people to put money in your bosom in January. Or somewhere and somebody just popped in where I was. And I had not talked to that person over anything. And Nananda Kunyambia Nilikwa na pesa, nilikwa nukupatiye within no time is to send money. I want to tell you the truth. When God sees your faith in flames, God will fund your ministry. Yours is to fund your faith to flames. The gift of God. It is not yours. It's from heaven. God will take responsibility. That is why the Apostle Paul says, I know he will guard that which he has entrusted in me. How does he guard? By giving you life. How does he guard? By meeting your expenses. Your expenses are not your responsibility. Your expenses are heaven's responsibility. After I handed over, when I was leaving my place of work, I got into my house and I knelt down. I told God, I have transferred from the hands of Indians. I'm in your hands. All my bills are your responsibility. I'm still driving the same car. I never sold it and I'm not selling it soon. It is fueled daily. I eat the same. In fact, I'm, I'm even heavier than I was that time. I'm just working on my weight. I want to tell you the truth. Men are not feeding you. God is feeding you. So confess. Find it and declare boldly walking in your house. Telling God, thank you because you are in charge. Thank you because you are watching over my children. Thank you because corona cannot reach me. Glory to God. Professor and declare corona will not touch your body. In the name of Jesus. And wherever it has touched, let it die. Let every sickness die from your body. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every sickness should die from your family. The mighty name of Jesus. We have received an anointing. Stretch your hands to the heavens. Open up your mouth and thank God and tell him thank you for the gift of God. Thank you for the anointing over my head. Thank you for the word of God in my heart. Thank you for the power of God in the inside of me. I am blessed coming in. I am blessed going out. I'm going to resurrect everything that is dead in my family. I will resuscitate that which appears to die. I carry the power of God. I carry the anointing of God. I carry the favor. Yes, favor will introduce me to the people I know not. Favor will open doors. The doors that my status cannot open. The doors I'm not qualified to enter. The favor of God will open those doors. My God, we thank you for the grace. 
the unmerited favor, the unmerited favor, Lord, will bless our children, my God. They will go to schools. They will increase in knowledge, my father. Our children will get good jobs. We confess it, we believe it, O oh God. Our children will be great in the land. For this is your word, King of all glory. My Lord, we will leave wealth. We will leave wealth to our children and our children's children. Your word says a righteous man will leave wealth to his children and his children's children. I pray and I bless this congregation. You have raised righteous men here. You have raised homes of people that carry God in the inside of them. Let them leave wealth to their children and children's children. Prosper your people. Protect your people. Surround your people. We bind every devil, every sickness, every disease, every attack of the devil. We bind with a sister in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah to the Lord of Lords. Father, this is our night. Our night to receive the breath of God. Release your breath from heaven. Breathe on us tonight, O God. I pray in the name of Jesus. Breathe on your people, the Holy Ghost anointing. Breathe on your people, supernatural power. Breathe on your people, power to conquer, power to win battle, power to do ministry, power to work in their place of work with boldness, with courage, Lord, without fear. I release the breath of God unto the people of God. Fear is going away. Fear is going away. Fear is going away in the name of Jesus. Fear you have no power. Fear you have no power in the name of Jesus. No weapon fashion, no power raised against us will prosper. We receive an anointing this moment. The power of God, the breath of God. The inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Glory to Jesus. Glory to the Son of God. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. My God, we thank you. Glory to Jesus in the highest. Glory to God. Lift up your holy hands. Father, by the authority given unto me in the name of Jesus, I release the breath of God. I release the breath of the Holy Spirit. As your people breathe in, I pray that they will breathe in strength. They will breathe in courage and power. They will breathe in, oh God, an anointing by which they will fight every sorcerer. They will fight every enemy of destiny. I release the breath of God. Receive an anointing this evening. Receive fire, working, miracle working power through the breath of God. Somebody else, you breathe in right now. Power is coming into you in the name of Jesus. I anoint the atmosphere with the Holy Ghost power. Breathe in favor. Breathe in grace. Breathe in victory. Breathe in hope. Let hopelessness go out of you. Breathe in hope. Breathe in prosperity. Let poverty live through the nose and the mouth. Breathe in the power to prosper. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God in the highest. Father, we thank you because we will see you and inherit what you have given us through your promises. We thank you and we bless you. One minute of thanksgiving. Just lift up your hands and thank God for the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God is here. Power of God is here. The anointing. I feel the presence of God. Speak in a tongue if you can. Mahande le kebosi kana bahanda. Riki bosekeri baba. Somebody speaking a tongue. You need to overcome your environment with the power of the Holy Ghost. Makebosi kiri mahanda raba. Don't be afraid of your neighbor. Don't be afraid of anybody. You don't know where they are going. They don't know where you are going. Makebosi kana mahande ni baba. Loko bohante. Riki bosekere mahanta. Power from heaven flowing. In the name of Jesus, power from the throne of God. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we exalt your name. Great is your faithfulness. We will never be the same. Our lives will never be the same. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Glory to God in the highest. Clap for Jesus. Clap for the King of Kings. Clap to him that overcame the grave for us. Jesus is his name. Father, we thank you and we bless you. As we bow down, I want to pray with those following us on Facebook. You are there not born again and this is the hour of salvation. Hour of receiving that which we have received. Salvation in our hearts. It is through believing in your heart that Jesus died and resurrected. And with your mouth you confess you will be born again. Repeat this prayer after me, my brother, my sister, if it is you that I'm speaking to. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner and I ask you to come into my life. I make you Lord and I make you Savior of my life. From today, I give myself to you to serve you and to worship you. Amen. If you pray that prayer, you are born again. You are a child of God. Look for a Bible teaching church and brethren to fellowship with and grow your faith. Amen. Let's clap to the Lord for those who have prayed that prayer. It's a seed we have sown in the air. It will get and harass somebody for salvation. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This marks the last day of our fanning to flame the gift of God, the anointing we carry. Fanning to flame up. I want to ask for an envelope. I want to give my offering. And I want us to give the best offering we can ever give in a revival as a seed of thanksgiving to the Lord. I'm persuaded in my spirit to sow my own seed and trust God that in this revival, as I leave this house today, I will continue to operate in a higher gear for 2021. I don't know what you are facing as a person, as a family, or anybody in your place of work. You have no money, but you have a seed. You have something to say to God, this is my life. Receive this as my token of love. And just allow the Holy Ghost to move in your life. Somebody help me with a pen, please. I'm sorry. I have given out my pen to somebody else. Just saying, just take the, the seed that will touch your mind when you are giving to God and tell God, in this revival meeting, my heart is connecting with you for this particular need. And I want a fire of God to flow in my life. God is not man to move away from his word. His word says, so sparingly, you reap sparingly. You sow abundantly, you reap abundantly. And some of us, this could be your lifeline. You never know what God wants to do in your life. Just obey the Spirit and do what God wants you to do. Father, we've listened to your word. We want to mix this word of God with faith. Money is worshipped by many people. But we don't worship money. We worship you, the God of our salvation. Lord, as we sow our seed of faith, believing you for that which you have said in your word these three days. Lord, our physical money will cause an open heaven to pour blessing in our life. I pray that our seed will open the heavens for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give in faith, trusting in God. Give in faith, trusting in God. So I thank God for this Father that he has brought us. And I pray that the God of heaven, the one who sees in dark, will answer you in broad daylight. The Lord will open doors for us in this year that we least expected. And God will also keep us in security. God will secure our environment and work that which him only can work in our life. Is a faithful God. Amen. I want to appreciate all of us that made it three days, some two days, some one day. All of you are blessed. Let's keep the fire burning. I say let's keep the fire burning. Look at your neighbor and appreciate them for me. Tell them thank you for being obedient to the leader of the church. Thank you for being obedient to the God of your salvation. Thank you for being obedient to the spirit at work in you. For standing firm and opposing the enemy. Amen. You are wonderful and you are a blessing. Stand on your feet in the presence of the Lord. You are a conqueror and more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus.
And as you leave this house, I command by the word of God, may you prosper. As you leave this house, I command by the word of God, everything that was defeating you, may you defeat it by faith. In the name of Jesus. In 2021, the Lord will help us to sail through with victory. Say amen. Stretch your hands to the heavens. Father, thank you for giving us grace to be in your presence. Now bless the church. I breathe an anointing of favor upon everyone in this place. Let favor work for us. May we prosper. May we increase. Let there be a testimony in our area that you have done it for us. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord bless you. You are a wonderful person. You are blessed. You will never, you will never lack anything. You will eat cuckoo before the weekends. <laughs>